Fragrance is definitely a category where I get in the mood for fall and winter, so I have a huge fragrance roundup today for personal and home fragrance. So I have perfumes as well as candles. A lot of these are going to be in the Sephora sale that's coming up at the end of the month, but I also have indie brands, I have some more niche brands, and a range of price points here. So I'm really excited to dive in. I think I'm gonna start with perfume and we're gonna work our way into candles. For me, when it comes to fall and winter fragrances, I definitely turn to wood notes, although wood notes are something that I wear year round, but I really lean into musks, ambers, wood notes, something a little bit more sensual and a little bit maybe even more unisex sometimes. I also love my patchoulis. I love um, like rich fruit notes that are blended with woods or musks sometimes. And so you'll definitely see that reflected in my tastes overall. I like some gourmands, but I'm very, very picky. <laughs> I tend to like gourmands when they're mixed with a musk or a wood. I just don't like a straight up sweet note and that's just my preference. It makes me feel a little bit sick throughout the day. So that's my personal taste. You'll definitely see that reflected here. I'm going to start with my newest perfume acquisition and it's Byredo de los Santos. So this is a new perfume from Byredo and I picked it up a couple of weeks ago when Sandra was in town. Um, she's on YouTube as I'm sure you know and Instagram. I'll link her below. But we had a fun little like coffee date and we went shopping and it was a really lovely day and we both picked up a perfume and this is the one I picked and it is so unique and I just can't stop wearing this perfume. I can't stop smelling it. I smell myself throughout the day all the time. So let me tell you about the notes. The top notes are Clary Sage and Mirabelle. Heart notes are Oris and Sisti Oil. Base is Musks, Ambroxan, and Palo Santo. It's what you would categorize, I think, generally as a woodsy perfume, but it's very unique. So when it opens, there's this fresh note that I think to me smells almost minty, but it's actually the clary sage. And so there's this like green freshness, but then it opens up into this like creamy skin-like musky note. It never goes too woodsy. It doesn't go sweet at all, but there's just this kind of sensual quality to it. It wears close to the skin, but I've also received tons of compliments on it. Every time I wear this and I go out, someone compliments me on this perfume. There is that Ambroxan core note, but it's not like any other Ambroxan woodsy perfume that I've smelled. It's just so unique. I can't stop smelling it. It has that Palo Santo note, so it is at core like a white woods, but it's so mysterious and it changes so much from when you apply it to the end of the day. And even though it is kind of a cleaner smell, there is sort of an, a muskiness, there is this mystery to it, and it's surprisingly long lasting even though it wears close to the skin. I just can't say enough good things about it. It's definitely the kind of thing you have to smell in person, but if you like woodsy notes, if you like ambers, if you like Palo Santo, you will love this. And De Los Santos, I have to say, I think it has become my new signature scent. I mean, I rotate perfumes a lot, but this is something that I can wear in the daytime or at nighttime. It's something that I can even layer with other scents because it has that musky skin-like quality to it. It's just, it's perfection. Byredo also just released a new perfume called Eyes Closed that I'm dying to try. How amazing does this sound? Top notes are cardamom and cinnamon. Heart notes are carrot, ginger, and orris butter. And base is papyrus and patchouli. I just feel like it's calling to me. I also love orris in anything. There's this like creamy complexity to it. I feel like it just opens up any perfume I've smelled it in, and it's in De Los Santos. And that carrot note is very, very intriguing. So I might have to pick that up. Continuing with woodsy fragrances, I have Fleur, Somebody Wood, and this is Fleur's newest release. And this is obviously a wood-based fragrance. The key notes are pretty classic scents. They're sandalwood, amber, and musk, but there is um, a sort of citrusy or fresh top note to this 
that does set it apart and gives it a little bit of lightness compared to your typical sandalwood ambery scent. It's definitely on the unisex side. You're not going to get any sweet notes. You're not going to get any florals from this, but I also think it wears close to the skin. It's very sensual. It's musky. Again, these are notes you're going to hear over and over, and I really like the way it wears on me. If you are not someone who traditionally likes wood scents, or if you find that sandalwood and musks go sour on you because you know sometimes it just doesn't work for your body chemistry you may not love this one especially with the fresher note i have heard some people say that they feel like there's a cleaning supply note to it it doesn't smell that way on me but again fragrance is so personal that i do want to say like some people don't love it I do really like it and it's the kind of thing that again I feel like I can wear every day I can layer with other things because it does wear close to the skin this is a sharper wood that fades into a softer wood whereas this is more of a clean wood that becomes creamier throughout the day then I have some very exciting additions to my collection boy smells sent over quite a few things because they're now in Sephora which is really exciting it just makes them a lot more accessible and obviously for those of us who shop at Sephora we can get points for them so they sent over marble fruit Hinoki Fantome and cashmere kush which are classics in their line if you're not familiar with boy smells they do what they call genderless fragrance so a lot of their well all of their scents are unisex and they're a brand that's started in LA they're based here in LA and it's been really cool to watch them grow they do a lot of interesting layered niche fragrances so this is their perfume bottle which first of all is just stunning it's sculptural you have obviously the glass bottle here then you have this really heavy cap and the cap is this like thick acrylic it's all very weighty and it honestly just looks like a work of art sitting on your vanity I it just brings me a lot of joy to like have this as an object in and of itself so then you um, remove the cap it's really on there and this obviously looks more like a traditional perfume bottle. Also, I realized I said they're genderless, but they're gender full. So they're lined. Their tagline is gender full fine fragrance. So this is called marble fruit, but it's categorized as a fruity floral. And I would say it's floral first and then a splash of fruit, and then at the core is a woods base. The keynotes in this one are pear, wild freesia, and sandalwood. I'm not a big florals wearer, so I wouldn't typically go for a freesia note in a perfume, but I do love pear and I love sandalwood, and I think the blend of all of those makes this a very explosive, big bold fragrance that still has a wearability and an earthiness to it at its core as it wears throughout the day this is a very big fragrance it has a big throw one pump will last all day long and then some it'll stay on your clothes i almost wish there were an eau de toilette of this this is an eau de parfum and i feel like it's a little bit too saturated for me sometimes because i want the scent but i don't always want to commit to wearing a big bold perfume especially because the first notes are floral and then it subsides to the sandalwood notes and the pear is somewhere in the middle nonetheless i still really really like this i've been reaching for it a lot and it's been a fun mix up to my typical woodsy scents and especially for me as someone who doesn't wear a lot of florals especially in the fall winter it's a nice um variation to have in my collection and then I have one of their classic fragrances. This is Cashmere Kush, and they have this in a perfume as well as a candle, and I'll discuss the candle in a little bit. The perfume is a little bit more floral. It's slightly different than the candle. This has notes of rhubarb, tulip, and powdered musks, and they categorize this as florals, as powdery florals. Even though there is a white floral note to this, and I don't typically like white florals, you do get that um, Kush note coming through. So there is this like earthiness and you can feel the sort of like stickiness of the cannabis scent. And I think that balances the powderiness and the freshness of the musks really well. And on the body, it opens with that floral note and then it settles more into that earthy note over time. I also feel like 
I mean, this does have a strong throw, but it's not as strong as Marble Fruit, on me anyway. And I kind of like that. I like, to me, the strength of this one is just right. Like Cashmere Kush, I have Hinoki Phantom in both the perfume and the candle. And this is a serious woods, like capital W woods scent. So the notes of this are Cypress, Hinoki, and Oak Moss. So this is your serious grown up woods. It's very unisex, leaning almost into masculine. So it does have that like slightly rougher, more masculine edge. And there's also a note, I think, of frankincense in here. I don't see patchouli as a note in here, but it does have the earthiness of a patchouli scent. And this is something a little bit heavier on the skin. It's like a little bit weightier, a little bit more serious. It has that kind of full, presence. Let's switch gears a little bit and go into another surprise floral that I actually really love, and that is Diptyque's Dosun. I think I've talked about this before on my channel. This has notes of tuberose, orange blossom, and jasmine, but it also has a base note of amber. And obviously that's why I like it, because it's a fruity wood. But this has that sharpness of tuberose, and to me, the sharpness of tuberose almost has like a spicy quality to it, and it's balanced and softened a little bit by the orange blossom and the jasmine. But I love that it has the amber heart note because when it settles into the skin, it becomes a little bit more musky, a little bit less floral, less sharp, and I really enjoy the evolution of this throughout the day. It's not something I reach for all the time. I kind of have to be in the mood for a floral, but to me this is a perfect fall winter floral because it has that spicy element to it. I've also been wearing Diptyque's Philosicos nonstop. You know I talked about this a few months ago. Um, but this is the Eau de Parfum, and I think the Eau de Parfum has a little bit more body to it that makes it a more year-round scent. Because the Eau de Toilette is a little bit lighter, a little bit more green, I would say the Eau de Parfum has more of that entire tree element to it, the entire fig tree. So you get the fruity, creamy notes, but you also get the wood heart notes in this. And this is also perfect for layering as well. So I just wanted to mention that because it's a perennial favorite now. Then I have a scent that really calls in winter to me, and that is Ellis Brooklyn A Prey. This is described also as a warm woods, but it's very complex and it's very unlike anything. So there's notes of juniper berry, bourbon, and cedar wood, which makes it sound like a heavy fragrance, but it's actually very creamy and soft and round, and there's a warmth to it. And I know that this was inspired by um, skiing in the mountains, like going skiing, taking in fresh air, and then going to the ski lodge and getting, you know, something warm to drink. There is a vanilla and praline note in here, actually. And there's a slight, not like actual booziness, but there is that bourbon quality. It's not what I would categorize it as a gourmand, but it's the way I like to wear a gourmand, which is that that vanilla praline note is blended into something rounder and something not as sweet. They gifted this to me last winter and I wore it a ton and I'm really excited to pull it out again because it's definitely like a fall winter scent and it's just very seasonal. Even the bottle is gorgeous. It comes in this like dark green glass bottle and it's obviously very wintry. The last perfume is the most gorgeous of them all, and that is Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall. This is a classic scent. So this has notes of top notes of rose, middle notes of black currant, raspberry, and clove, and then base notes of patchouli, sandalwood, and frankincense. You've heard a lot of those notes in these perfumes before, but this is very unique. The top note is rose, which is interesting because I don't really like a typical rose scent, but this is not your powdery young rose. This is like an earthy, deep, sexy rose. Then it has those like deep dark berries, the currant, the raspberry, but they're blended with spice. So you get that kind of clove, spicy, winter spice quality in this, and it ends with a very like dark, sexy, sensual woods scent. This has incredible, huge throw, it wears, like, it will stay on your clothes for days, and when I spray one spray of this, 
I can smell it. Like if I spray this and walk around the house, I'll smell it in my house all day long. And I kind of love that about this. There is something that's very like grown woman. I have arrived. This is classy. This is like, I don't know. There's something almost of another age. There's something kind of like Victorian about this. And I also think the patchouli note makes it um, settle into the skin in a really interesting and like sticky woods kind of way. I don't think this is a scent for everyone and the price tag certainly is not for everyone, but it's something that I had heard about for so long. Violet Grey gifted it to me last year and it's not an everyday perfume, but if I'm going out for like a date night, if I'm going out to a holiday party or an event, there's something very kind of commanding. And I feel like the name obviously is also commanding too. Of It's a portrait of a lady, it's elegance, it's something classic, it's a grown woman scent. That's it for the perfumes. Maybe I'll do a more winter focused edit when that time comes, but I'm gonna move on to candles. And candles is where I move, I mean, I still love my woods, but that's where I can play with gourmands. I can play with other notes that I don't necessarily like to wear on my body. The first candle I wanna talk about is limited edition, which is why I wanna mention it first. And it is Ingrid Nilsson's brand. It's the new Savant, which you guys know I love. And this is their limited edition candle called Witching Hour. Hour, and it is so good. I mean, I love the playfulness of the vision of this candle, but I also love the notes. So it's persimmon, black truffle, red wine, and smoked amber. They describe this as fruity, earthy, and spellbinding. This is very much their October Halloween candle. And there's something playful about this, but there's also something that captures that um, October essence so well. There is something about this that is fruity, but it's not sweet. So I think the notes of persimmon and especially the red wine gives it that body of like a dark berry or, you know, obviously the grape <laughs> in wine. And at the same time, it's balanced by the truffle. There's this kind of interesting earthiness to it as well as the amber. It also seems to me to have this note that's reminiscent of plum. For example, I'm thinking specifically of Nest's, um, what is it called, autumn plum candle? I can't quite remember. I'll insert a picture of it and I'm gonna talk about Nest too, but it has that quality to it. There's something that's like, yeah, that deep, rich fruitiness. And to me, it evokes that like mold wine quality even more. So it's been selling out and they've been restocking. They're going to do another restock, but it's going to be gone at the end of October. So if you're curious about this, do check it out before the month ends. Their other candle that I wanna mention is called The Usual, and this is in their um, permanent collection. So this has notes of cocoa powder, pistachio, black coffee, vanilla bean, and suede oak. And oh, it's so rich and warm, and it just makes my mouth water. So the first note I definitely get is the cocoa powder. And it's not chocolate because it's not sweet. It is that like true raw cocoa smell. But then you get that creaminess from the pistachio and the vanilla bean. And it's also balanced from going too, too sweet by the coffee and the suede oak, which is such an interesting like note to have. I think it prevents it from being an overly sweet dessert scent. And even though this isn't like a sweet, sweet gourmand, it still does make my mouth water. It just reminds me of like making brownies, brownie batter, before you eat the brownies, but you can smell the brownie batter. <laughs> That's what this smells like. The next candle is my friend Danielle's candle company. It's Palm Trees in 80 Degrees. I will link her below along with everything else, everyone else I've spoken about. And this is their newest scent. It's called Cashmere at Christmas. And it's a little bit early, I know, to be going into woods scents, but I love my pine tree scents. I love my Christmas tree scents. You know I love the Nest holiday candle. There's definitely some of that DNA in here, but there's also a bit more fruitiness, I think, than the um, Nest holiday candle. This has top notes of cinnamon and ginger, middle notes of plum, black cherry, clove, and amber, and base notes of pine, fir, and cypress. So I think that's why it reminds me of Nest holiday candle. There is that balance of spice, fruits, and woods, but I do think this leans a little bit more fruity, but it is just as big and sharp and fresh 
as um, as Nest Holiday, and it's also huge. This is a 12 ounce candle. They're $28. It's the best value, I think, in terms of price per ounce of the candles that I'm going to talk about, and they burn forever. And I love that fresh scent of pine coming through. I don't love winter, but I love burning pine scented candles, so it makes it worth it. Speaking of Nest, I have their pumpkin chai candle, which is a classic, and it's what Nest does so well. They take these very familiar scents like pumpkin and they turn it into an elevated experience while still, I think, um, evoking that nostalgia that we have around something like a pumpkin note, which we've smelled and tasted everywhere at this point. It's a blend of wild pumpkin, spicy masala chai, cardamom, ginger, and cinnamon, and I do really like the chai note in here. I think that's what sets it apart and helps it feel a little bit um, more elevated than your typical pumpkin spice. So it's kind of like pumpkin spice grown up and it has a great throw, it's very creamy, it's a spicy gourmand, it is sweet, but I think the spice in it prevents it from feeling too sickly sweet for me, and it just makes my mouth water. I love this candle, and I love burning it in the fall. For more limited edition candles, I wanna talk about the Otherland Fall Collection. This was their fall collection last year, they sent me these, but they brought it back this fall and I'm, I'm still burning these. I love them so much, so I'm excited to talk about them. My favorite for sure is Velvet Persimmon and this might be their favorite candle that my favorite candle of theirs that they've ever done. This is a very fruity, juicy, sweet fruit. And it's about the sweetest fruit note, I think, among everything I've talked about. There's notes of juicy persimmon, velvety leaves, and mold cider. It's funny because I don't, I smell more cider in this personally than I smell persimmon. That's just me, but um, I love it nonetheless. It comes in obviously their beautiful packaging, you get their really cute lid, and Otherland in general just does beautiful packaging. Beautiful art, beautiful prints, it's just a work of art. Their other candle from their fall collection is called Berkshire's Granola, and this is a, sl a smaller throw. So this is something I would burn in my office, something in a smaller room, but it has notes of creamy oat milk, toasted granola, and pumpkin seeds. There is that like creamy lactonic quality to this, but there's also, Sometimes I get a little bit of a floral note, not like a true floral, but just a little bit of something that offsets it from being too round and sweet and creamy, which I think is nice. There's a little bit of freshness. And even though this is um, not as big of a throw, for example, as Velvet Persimmon, there's something very comforting and cozy about this. And I know not everyone wants a candle that's going to fill the whole room and be explosive and huge. Sometimes you want the ambiance without too much fragrance or if you're sensitive to fragrance. And I think this is a candle for that kind of mood or that kind of person. And then let's go back to Boy Smells to round out the video. So Cashmere Kush in their candle has notes of of cannabis flower, cashmere wood, white amber, vetiver, tulip, and powdery musk. So to me, the um, cannabis note, the woods note are more forward in the candle than they are in the perfume. In the perfume, you get more of the floral notes first. And I love this for, it's kind of a burn anywhere candle. It's great in a living room. It's great in an office. I wouldn't burn this in a bathroom or a kitchen, but it's just a great, warm, cozy ambiance. There's something a little bit sexy about it. There is that like sticky cannabis note, but it's not um, like a grungy wood. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. There is like a depth to it, but there is this balance of the, the warmer, heavier notes with the, um, what is it? The tulip and powdery musk. It's not a powdery candle by any means. They just kind of balance out the warmer, heavier woods in here. I actually gave this to Sean like two weeks ago and he's already burned through half of this candle. He didn't trim the wick and um, the wick <laughs> melted on both sides into the wax. So I had to do a little bit of um, candle surgery, but I think that's just a testament to how good this candle is. Then we've got Hinoki Phantom, and this was the heaviest of the fragrances that I mentioned for perfume, and I would say the same of the candle. This is like a sexy 
date night kind of candle. So this has notes of resin, hinoki, cardamom, jasmine, moss, and guyac wood. And so there is this like deep earthy richness to it. It does lean towards masculine and there's almost this even like a smoky hearth kind of note. Not exactly in the way that like, for example, Nest has that hearth candle. It's not quite as smoky, but there is that, um, I don't know, this almost like incense -y quality to this candle. So if you like incense notes, if you like that sexy dark kind of scent, this is very much for you. For something a little bit fresher, something more floral, you might wanna try Cameo. Cameo has notes of crystallized ginger, rose, tuberose, vanilla, white woods, and musk. And I definitely get the rose note and the tuberose first. So it starts out with that floral, but then it's balanced by the ginger, the vanilla, it turns a little bit more mellow, and then it has that white woods and musk heart note. For me, the blend of all of these notes is what makes me like this candle, even though I don't like rose notes, like I mentioned with the Portrait of a Lady perfume. Um, but there is something a little bit lighter and more powdery and floral and a little bit more feminine about Cameo, for sure, than like Hinoki Phantom. I feel like this is the opposite, actually, of Hinoki Phantom. This is the lighter side and this is the deep, dark, sexy side. So that's everything for today's edit. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is going to be included in the upcoming Sephora sale, and I will mention a few of these in that video that I do, that I always do with my big roundup of recommendations recommendations, but I know I'm not going to be able to get to every single one, so I wanted to have a dedicated video for all of these to live. So let me know if you have any questions about these, and I also want to know what you're burning in your house, what you're wearing in terms of perfume, if there's anything I should check out, if there's anything you think I would like, please do let me know because I think especially in fall winter, there's something about fragrance that's really comforting. We're maybe not going out as much, not spending as much time out in the world, even though we do have holidays and special events and things like that. There's something about fragrance and especially home fragrance that makes me want to nest a little bit. So yeah, let me know what you've been loving and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.